G'day, welcome back to another episode. Uh, in this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, give you a quick rundown um, or update on our OzJ 12 volt, 240 volt water heater, which we've got installed there. There's another video uh, you can click the link that I'll put in. Thought I might go through now, we've had it for uh, 12 months. Thought I might uh, just cover off how it works how it interacts between the 12 volt and 240 volt and yeah some of the quirks there's a few little quirks about it overall really happy with this unit uh, it's an Oz J1 uh, you can run this directly off 12 volt or 240 volt I suppose but I think they've got a 240 volt um, option so you wouldn't probably use the 12 volt 240 volt if you were just going to always have 240 volts. Um, I'll cover off kind of a bit about how much power it uses and all that as well in this video. So yeah, first of all, um, we are currently plugged into 240 volts. So if I turn up, uh, I think it's already on. So if I just adjust the temperature here, you can see it's now heating up the water. Uh, you can switch it off with this one um, however I believe that if we turn on the 12 volt now uh, it won't we've got to switch for the 12 volt down here if we turn on the 12 volt that it won't actually turn on the 12 volt for some reason it's a bit of a quirk for the heater and we'll go through the wiring diagram a bit later on but yeah you can see there we're not got the um, 12 volt heating happening uh, but if we switch off the two I've got a 240 volt switch in the back of this pantry so if we switch that off then that turns all the 240 volt off to it and now you can see we have got the 12 volt working so it's a bit weird why it works like that but uh, I guess you just need to make sure that you have a switch on your 240 volt um, I actually can't really think of a reason why you would want to use 240 volts, um, sorry, 12 volts when you've got plugged into 240 volts, but there might be a reason, I'm not sure. Um, you can see once we've got the 12 volts plugged in, we've got the blue light lighting up there, um, and the little LCD screen is plugged in there, and then I've got obviously got the remote uh, controller, which I've got put up in this cupboard here. And the way that works is you simply set with which um, temperature you want it to target and it will go ahead and chase that temperature. So that that I've just shown you is basically what it would be like if you were just using it in a 12 volt application. Currently there's no 240 volts plugged in at all. Well it's plugged in but it's not switched on. So as you can see um, the 12 volt works fine by itself and in fact it doesn't even want the um, 240 volt plugged in at all so I don't know if you've got an inverter in your in your caravan um, and maybe you don't want to use the 240 volts to heat up the hot water when you're plugged into your inverter then you definitely want a 240 volt switch on the end of the 240 volt plug um, that you can switch off uh, without you know like switch it off so that it heats it up with 12 volts if you do if you don't do that you need a decent size inverter i think around a, th a 1500 watts it's a thousand watt rated so you probably want 1500 watts and it heats the water up quicker i've used it by accident on our inverter a few times and it heats the water up really quick but it also uses a lot of power so while this is on i might go and grab my clamp amp meter and we'll go and have a look at what it's drawing so I've just got my amp meter clamped on now and you can see there it's 25.8, 25.7 uh, amps and that's in the wire that is going to the hot water heater. If you haven't got one of these I'd highly recommend grabbing one. Um, the clamp meters are just awesome for you know working out um, you know how much things draw without having to do anything. Uh, they're pretty cheap, like, like it's super cheap or Repco or whatever. So, yeah, um, so now I might jump back in and we'll start going through the wiring and how you can wire one of these up. 
So I just switched on back on the 240 volt switch that I've got in the back of that pantry. Uh, and you can see now it's back on 240 volts automatically. You don't have to swap anything over. Uh, it'll automatically de detect that you're on 240 volts and the hot water service will flick over to that, the more efficient, I guess, uh, way of heating the water in terms of speed, maybe not in terms of the amount of um, electricity users. It's probably very similar. Anyway, now we've been through all of that, um, I'm going to jump into the wiring diagram and just run you through how it's wired. Again, a little bit interesting how it's wired. It's not complicated at all. So I'll try and run you through how it works and a couple of different ways maybe of wiring it up. Alrighty, so on the OzJ website, um, if you scroll down, they have a manual. Um, and if you open that up, at the back of that, they have a wiring diagram. So I'm just going to talk you through that. Uh, here, let's zoom in a bit. So here is basically how, um, you know, this product switches between the 12 volts and how it's wired 12 volts and 240 volts. I'll kind of ignore the 240 volts because I think that's kind of self-explanatory. But if we look at the 12 volts, you can see here we've got a positive wire that's coming through a relay, a 40 amp relay, and going to the heating element. Um, so the negative goes straight to the heating element. The positive goes through a relay that needs to be flipped or tr or triggered. And that is actually triggered by this, this uh, path here, which is actually triggered by um, the 12 volt connector. So what you need to do is, there's a couple of big wires. They're the ones that are directly to your battery. So they're self-explanatory. You run a big, an appropriate sized one that will support like 30 amps through to your battery from those two big wires that I'll try and put it up on the screen here from when I open the box. For the other one, there's another connector with like a two pin connector. You need to provide that a positive 12 volts and a ground um, or negative back to the battery um, to be to basically to switch the unit on. What I did is I put this positive from the connector into the positive from the battery. I took it on from the same one so it's always live and then I put a switch on the ground. So this negative goes to a switch and then the switch goes to a ground that I've got here near the heater. And then once that switch connects those two wires up, it creates a circuit. And the circuit creates, um, pulls this relay shut and this relay shut then um, turns on the 12 volt uh, heating element. Uh, all of all that this bit part here is saying is that when you're in your 240 volt plug, uh, you know your 240 volts plugged in, it's supplying this 12 volts and shutting this this really small relay, which is basically saying um, 12 volts. You're not running. I'm running with my 240 volts, so it takes priority over it. Um, I hope this has all made sense. Feel free to chuck questions down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them where I can. Um, my view on this heater, having run it for nine months, is it's a great unit. It's perfect for people that don't want gas or don't need gas. Um, runs off, I have a 100 amp hour lithium battery and it runs fine off that. I've got quite a bit of solar on the roof, so I tend to turn it off and use it where I want. Uh, it, if you heat the water up at the, at, you know, and you can wash the dishes at night and then also have hot water for the morning. So it's quite good like that as well. Uh, shower wise, if it's hot water, we can get, uh, two or three of us ha having a shower in the outside shower, just in the one, um, batch of 10 liters of hot water. So I thought 10 liters might not be enough. 10 liters is quite a good amount. Um, especially if you stagger your showers for, if for a couple, it's probably enough. Um, for a family, you might, might want to heat it up in between your showers. Anyway, that's a wrap for this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a like and consider subscribing. Uh, 
Thanks a lot, everyone. Catch you next time.